Meet Mzali Jabu Iyabu, a.k.a. Thomas Magakula, a.k.a. T.K. Nguana, a.k.a. Tom Rufus Reddy, a.k.a. Thomas Mutsipe, a.k.a. Pete Timothy, a.k.a. Kelly John Stone, a.k.a. Tabo Bester. Hoo-wee! This smooth operator seems to not only have Ulimi Olushelilayo, Oluheha Amaslay Queens, but it's clear that his bomb diggity demon Zik is also a soul snatcher that turned a doting wife, devoted mother, and successful queen into a sferb, deadbeat parent, and a hard core criminal. Tabo Bester's life began in tragedy and might just end in tragedy as well. That's if his police pals don't let him get away for good this time. Cough, cough. Born on the 13th of June, Tabo Bester isn't only a psychotic Gemini, he's also a product of rape and unwanted teenage pregnancy, following the rapation of his 16-year-old mother by oh my friend, oi sick fuck, unable to raise a child that reminded her of her traumas and who resembled his monstrous father. Tabo's mother handed him over to her parents. Hence, Tabo was raised by his grandparents. It seems as though Tabo was an evil seed planted to wreak havoc as he began causing chaos before he could even speak. At the tender age of four, he stole cash and lied to his grandfather about it, saying his kind neighbor had gifted him that cash for simply being Wait for it, a good boy. (laughs) Astonished by how anyone would give such a young child such a ridiculously large amount of money, his grandfather confronted the neighbor about it. The neighbor revealed that she had never done such and that Tabo was a master crook because she hadn't even realized that her money was missing. Tabo went on to prove her right by stealing a bottle of coins from a tavern owner at the age of five. He continued with his shenanigans all the way to his teens. By age 17, he had become a jailbird who had been charged and convicted for breaking into homes and getting his sticky hands on the assets and properties of countless community members. The justice system thought that reuniting him with his mother would help rehabilitate him. Hence, in 2004, he was released from prison and placed in his mother's care. Perhaps his abandonment issues were triggered when he realized that his mother still didn't want him so he sought comfort via social media to gain a sense of importance and belonging in the world in 2005 he began to pose as an international scout approaching young aesthetically appealing women who aspired to be models and brand ambassadors and having them pay a fee to sign up to his sham of a talent agency. He used his exotic looks and charming personality to lure them into isolated spaces so he could rob and rape them. He was a wanted man evading the police for years until he was finally apprehended again in 2009. After being charged for committing fraud and being sentenced to three years in prison, 
You would think that he would do anything and everything in his power to never go back there again. Think again. After his release in 2011, he took his con artistry to the next level. He began forging paperwork and creating fake receipts to secure five-star hotels, private jets, and top-of-the-range shooting equipment. Aspiring models and brand ambassadors were flewed out, robbed, and of course, rapation would take place. After having the time of his life, living like a Makulubas throughout 2011, he was apprehended yet again. Yay! Uyalitanda ijele nangu mundu unafunga uguti uyag enjoya ugliwa izina. To highlight how crooked the justice system is in South Africa, Tabo Bester got bail after having committed fraud for the umpteenth time and after having violated, robbed, and zwengulad countless women. Unfortunately, there's just something about danger that wets the panties of most women. Hence, the magnificent Tibos managed to wiggle his way into the heart of Nomfondo Tiulu, an aspiring model and car saleswoman who sold him a BMW so that he could look like the big boy he claimed to be. To Nomfondo, he seemed like the whole package. So she decided to pursue a romantic relationship with him. One Slimana day, while Nomfondo and Tabo were on vacation, Avuka Amatimona Tibos. So he ended up stabbing Nomfondo to death. He then instructed the staff at the Cape Town B&B they were staying at not to disturb his dear lover as she was resting peacefully. Little did the staff know that he meant this in a literal sense. May her soul rest in eternal peace. In 2012, Tabo Bester was arrested for the murder of Nomfondo as well as the rapation and robbery of two other women. And he was finally sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 25 years. Hence, she cheated on her husband, deserted her children, and risked losing everything she's worked so hard to build and secure just for Umti's man. Imagine the sacrifices, sweat, and tears it takes to secure multiple degrees and all the perks that come with them. <laughs> Anywho, with Dr. Nandipa and Tabo Bester currently in custody, many of their associates are quivering like leaves as they too may be exposed and apprehended for being their accomplices. One of these associates happens to be Dr. Pashi, whose real name is Dr. Mereka Patience Martha Njani, whose passports were found on Dr. Nandipa upon her and her thugnificent lover's apprehension. Afunani, I'm a passport alpha we fugitive. We've established that Dr. Nandipa is capable of anything at all. So what's a little bit of stealing from an old friend, right? Perhaps that's why Dr. Pashi has opened a fraud case against Dr. Nandipa Magudumana and Tabo Bester. But 
What if this old friend has been benefiting from all the criminal activities carried out by Bonnie and Clyde Light? Maybe she opened the case. Esebon wuti haibo na kukshuba. Watata zela wati maibabo na kumzombulegi zing. Hotingi imboze masinyane unaze penyege amasazo am nam. To erase suspicion, Dr. Pashi published a statement that reads as follows. This official statement has been published on behalf of the Dr. Pashi Foundation, the Power Women Group, and the International Power Women Foundation. We have learned with great concern through various media outlets of the potentially stolen identity of our founder, Dr. Merica Patience Martin Chani, by Dr. Nandipa Magudumana. Dr. Nchani is seeking legal advice, and to the extent that these reports are true, the matter will be dealt with legally. In 2020, the organization hosted a women's seminar with Dr. Nandipa Magudumana as one of the guest speakers. This event was in line with the organization's sole purpose of inspiring, empowering, and uplifting women and children. The Dr. Pashi Foundation further entered into a PR management agreement with Vibes Africa Incorporation International, a company that is owned by Dr. Nandipa Magudumana. The organization and Dr. Nchani were not aware of the allegations that have been reported on in the media. Furthermore, neither the organization nor Dr. Nchani in her personal capacity have received funding from Dr. Nandipa Magudumana or indirectly from an organization affiliated with her. The organization will continue in its efforts to improve the lives of women and children in underprivileged communities. Dr. Njani and the organization hereby distance themselves from any association with Dr. Nandipa Magudumana outside of what's been stated above. I guess the saying, when days are dark, friends are few, really is true. Because how are you now distancing yourself from Dr. Nandi Pamakudumana when in an affidavit you yourself confirmed that you gave Tabo Bester Dr. Nandi Pamakudumana's second husband, your documents, fingerprints, ID, and police clearance certificate, as he was assisting you apply for an American work visa. Allegedly! How was Tabo Bester meant to pull that off? Uba yena and was bani ezo wenzelint enkulunganga. How are you now distancing yourself from Dr. Nandi Pamakutumana when you, the skeleton a doctor, and Terry Peto are all besties? Allegedly! Asni and Ziwi nye mfunja alo. Situle siyabu uganji. And the way gunga kona, the only legitimate doctors we'll be left with are Dr. Malinga and Dr. Kumalo. And quite frankly, when all is said and done, everyone involved in this mushu mushu should perish in jail and in hell.